my name is Mr. Paul. Happy Friday. <laughs> I'm so excited to get to hang out with all of you today and make some art together. Are you excited? Go grab some art supplies. Whatever you have will be just fine. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. Colored pencils, markers, whatever you've got. <laughs> Go grab some stuff and then we'll get started, okay? I'm gonna move my sign out of the way. And I've got a nice big blank piece of paper all set and ready to make some art with. I'm so excited to see you guys. It's wonderful to get to hang out with you. I look forward to this so much every single week. And I'm so glad that there are so many of you that like to come and hang out and make art with us. And I want to say a special thank you also to my friend Dominique, who sent me a message a couple weeks ago and said, Mr. Paul, you need to get a better camera for your videos. So if things look a little bit clearer today, hopefully, and you can hear me a little bit better, that's because uh, of, I'm using my new camera. So thank you, Dominique. Dominique is an awesome artist. She does fashion design. She does all kinds of cool stuff. So it really is a good thing to have friends who know how to do stuff. <laughs> so thank you, Dominique. All right, today, let me find it. I wanted to share with you my new favorite book. <laughs> I have a new favorite book every couple days. So right now, this is my new favorite book. It is called The World Needs More Purple People. <laughs> I love this book because purple is my favorite color. Do you have a favorite color? Think about that while we're reading this story. See if you can think of what your favorite color might be because that is going to be important afterwards. We're going to make some artwork that has to do with our favorite colors today. Okay, but first we're going to read this story together. Let me get myself situated so you can see the pictures really well. All right, you ready? Let's go. Look at those purple footprints. <laughs> Sometimes my floor looks like that if I step in paint too much. <laughs> the world needs more purple people. Hey kid, now this is what's in the in the bubble. Hey kid, I've got a secret. It's going to knock your socks off and I can't wait to share it with you. Ta-da! Follow my guide to become a purple person. How to be a purple person by Penny. All right, are you ready? We're gonna follow along and learn how to be a purple person. Now you may be asking yourself, why in the whole wide world would I want to be purple? It's a good question. <laughs> purple is a magic color made when red and blue work together. I think all the best things in the world are purple. But you're probably wondering, what does that have to do with people? Wow, are you a genius? Because you're already on your way to becoming a purple person. You want to know why? I do. <laughs> Step one. Ask really great questions. My dad says purple people ask great questions. Questions about everything. Even questions about questions. <laughs> hey dad, how far away is outer space? Have you ever met a dolphin? How many dolphins live in outer space? <laughs> That's a lot of questions, huh? Purple questions are the kind that help you learn something really big about the world or something really small about another person. How tall is the world's tallest rainbow? <laughs> What's your bear's name? Charlie. <laughs> 
Dad says the more purple questions you ask, the more purple you become. How many do you think there are? He also says I can only ask him 20 questions about space dolphins per day. <laughs> Step two, laugh a lot. I do that. <laughs> do you laugh a lot? My grandma says purple people laugh a lot. We are always laughing together. I mean like snot out your nose laughing. <laughs> that is a serious laugh. We laugh at books. We laugh at jokes. How do you make a tissue dance? Put a little boogie in it. <laughs> we laugh at donkey dances and hairy elephant knees. Especially laugh at Grandpa's funny noises. <laughs> Purple laughing helps us remember the things that we share and forget what we thought made us different. And it's almost impossible to be angry when you are laughing. Try it. I dare you. Grandma says the more purple laughing you do, the more purple you become. She also says Grandpa's noises are her favorite funny noises in the whole wide world. All right, step three, use your voice and don't lose your voice. My mom says purple people use their voice and don't lose their voice. She encourages me to use my voice to sing. <laughs> the song is, My dad is the one with the hairy chest who loves me more than all the rest. <laughs> to give good ideas. He's saying, Let's wear monster costumes to school. And to share my opinions. I personally feel like we shouldn't have to eat Brussels sprouts because they smell like sweaty socks. <laughs> Sometimes people lose their voice, and that's okay. It happens. A purple voice helps someone who is having trouble finding their own voice. Purple people don't just speak up, they also listen. Maybe you could tell them you don't like it when they call you that name. Want me to help you tell them? Mom says the more you use a purple voice, the more purple you become. Mom, can you help me with my play? <laughs> Look at her costume. She also says she heard my opinion on Brussels sprouts, but I still have to eat them, and I'm going to work on a better argument. <laughs> Step four, work hard, super duper hard. My grandpa says purple people know how to dig in and get stuff done. He and I like to work hard while we build things. And while we learn things, and while we grow things, purple work is the kind of work that's done together to change something that needs changing. What do we want? More playgrounds. When do we want them? Now! <laughs> Fix something that needs fixing, or help someone who needs helping. Grandpa says the more purple work you do, the more purple you become. He also says no purple work has ever been done while sitting on your backside sipping strawberry lemonade. Okay, are you ready for the last step? Are you ready? Are you sure? Are you sure you're sure? Are you really, really ready? Okay, drum roll please. <laughs> Step five, paint yourself purple. What? 
I have done that before by accident. <laughs> Just kidding. That's not the way to become a purple person. Actually, being a purple person has nothing to do with what you look like. My teacher says purple people look all sorts of ways. They are big and small, old and young. Some wear cool coats. Some wear shorts with lots of pockets. And some wear funny hats. She says some purple people feel blue sometimes and red other times. And some purple people even have green hair. Step five, just be the real you. Like my teacher always says, purple people come in every color you can dream up and every size you can think of. The only way to be purple is to just be you because you're the only you we've got. So these are my surefire steps to turning into a purple person. You ask really great <laughs> you ask really great questions, you laugh a lot, you use your voice all the time, you're a really hard worker, and you are totally you. Well, I'll be a llama's mama. <laughs> You've been beautifully purple this whole time. I sure am glad you're a purple person because the world needs more purple people just like you. The llama's saying, Mama? <laughs> That's it. Ta-da! That is how to be a purple person. <laughs> I hope you like that story. I love it because I love the color purple and I love the message of the story too, which is that we all should be ourselves. So now let's make some artwork all about that idea. Go ahead and get out your art supplies. I've got mine right here. I'm going to use my oil pastels today. And I think it would be really fun if all of us picked our favorite color and only used that color today. So actually my favorite color is purple. So I'm going to use just, even though I've got all these colors, see, I'm only going to use the purple one. All right, I'll set the rest of them down here. And today, I want you to pick your own favorite color. So if you love green or if you love blue, whatever it is, get your favorite color. And then let's make some art all about our favorite color. I'm going to start by drawing a big picture of my face. <laughs> I'm going to do it in a really kind of silly way. Don't worry about making it look real. And I want you to think about how your favorite color makes you feel. So for me, purple makes me feel really creative. For whatever reason, when I see the color purple, I like to close my eyes and imagine stuff. So I'm going to draw my face really big. There's a big Mr. Paul face. And I'm going to draw it with my eyes closed like I am imagining stuff, like I'm feeling creative. So you draw yourself with your favorite color, however that color makes you feel. It doesn't have to be the same as mine. You draw it your way, okay? Now I'm gonna draw my nose. <laughs> and I'm going to draw a big smile because purple makes me happy. Better draw some eyebrows. Ears. My earring. Have to get all the details. <laughs> okay, and I suppose I should give myself some purple hair. That would be kind of fun to have purple hair. I might have to get a purple wig sometime and try that, huh? Okay, and now I'm going to start thinking about all the different things in the world that are purple. 
and I'm going to draw them right here on the same picture with my face. Because when you do a portrait, it doesn't just have to be a picture of a person. It can tell more of a story. So I'm going to think about all the purple things that I like, and I'm going to put them right here in this picture. So I'm going to draw, let's see, a purple flower. So whatever color you picked, think about all the things in the world that are that color that you could add into your picture. When you do a, a drawing or a painting and you only use one color, do you know what that's called? That's called making a monotone picture. Monotone. Mono means one, and tone is a kind of another word for color. So it means you're doing your whole drawing in just one color. Did you know that every color also kind of has different emotions that it brings out when you see it in a painting or in a drawing or in any kind of artwork? Every color gives you a different feeling. Let's try a little experiment. I'm going to look away and I'm going to make a face like, a cert like I'm feeling a certain way and I want you to try to think what color matches my expression. There's no right or wrong answer, whatever you think. All right, are you ready? Okay, let me see. <laughs> I'm trying to look angry, but I'm laughing. <laughs> okay, hold on. There. What color do you think that is? <laughs> I, I think red, that's what I'm gonna say, but that doesn't mean that that's the only answer. Um, I, I'm gonna say red because I felt like my face was starting to turn red when I was making that expression. <laughs> but also, red's a color that sometimes you associate with anger, or what else could you associate red with, though? Red goes with a lot of different things. Red could be make you think of fire, it could make you think of, you know, heat, can make you think of like you're outside working hard. Um, red could also make you think of like love, like a heart. So every color can make people feel a lot of different things. And when you use different colors in your artwork, it's good to think about what are the emotions that are connected with that color for you. And then that will help you bring out those emotions in your picture. So hopefully, when people look at my picture that I'm making today with the color purple, it will help them feel creative, because that's how purple makes me feel. All right, I've got some flowers. I'm gonna draw a bunch of other stuff too. Before I do that, do you wanna see a painting I just finished this week? I, I brought it because I thought it kind of fit our theme since it has a lot of purple in it. I don't show you a whole lot of my paintings, so let me, let me pull this out and show you. I just finished a little painting of a purple dragon. What do you think? Isn't she pretty? I think she's a nice dragon, even though she looks maybe a little scary. But see all the different shades of purple in there? So maybe I'll even put a purple dragon in my picture. Popping right out from the head. Why not? There we go, instant dragon. <laughs> Dragons have scales, so I'm gonna draw some little scales on my dragon. So what colors did you guys pick? What's your very favorite color? I'm trying to think what some of the colors might be. So if you picked green, what kinds of things might you be drawing that are green? Leaves, grass, lots of nature stuff, huh? What else? I have a lot of green shirts. Actually, I have a pair of purple shoes that I love. I'm gonna draw those in here. <laughs> I 
It's your art piece. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody else but you. If somebody looks at it and says, why do you have a shoe and a dragon and flowers? You just say, because that's my picture. That's what I wanted to draw. That's all you have to say. Okay. I think I'm going to draw... Hmm. I'm going to draw my collar here first. And then coming out behind it, I'm going to draw a purple castle. With a tall tower. Maybe there's a little road that comes out and can come all the way down here and the shoe is sitting on the road. Why not? <laughs> this is going to be a very silly drawing. That's okay, I like silly. All right. Now, I think I'm going to draw a tree in the background with some purple leaves. Just keep thinking of all the things that you can think of that come to mind when you think of your favorite color and just draw those in your picture. It doesn't have to look anything at all like my picture. It can look like whatever you want. And those purple leaves. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if things are different sizes. I mean, look how giant my head is compared to the castle. It's your art piece, so you can make things different sizes. It's almost like a collage, which is when you cut out different pictures and put them together. The sizes don't really have to make sense. It can be, it can be however you want. I have to peel a little bit more off of my... my uh, I'm using oil pastels, which are kind of like crayons. So I have to peel off some of the paper so I can get to it. <laughs> All right. Now, the last time I was at the aquarium, I saw a really pretty purple fish. So where do we want to put our fish? Let's see. Maybe, maybe swimming right over my cheek. do purple, like purple stripes. Very friendly fish. Very happy. Big smile. <laughs> I'm going to do one more purple flower up here, kind of a smaller one. Are you having fun thinking up all kinds of interesting things to draw that go with your favorite color? It could seriously be anything in the world. Use your imagination and just have fun with it. You can fill up your paper with all kinds of cool stuff. I'm going to do a little outer space scene up here now. Maybe make a, like a purple planet. Should that planet be named? How about Art World? <laughs> Put some little craters on there. <laughs> okay. Maybe 
be some purple stars. It's fun when you just let your imagination go crazy and don't even worry if you know how to draw stuff perfectly. It doesn't matter. Just do it the best you can. Like, I just totally messed up that star, <laughs> but then but you can fix it. Just had to make it a little bigger. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe a purple butterfly. Uh-oh, I just broke my crayon. <laughs> All right, put that half over there. Might need it later. That's okay, it happens. And it's okay to let stuff go right off the page. See how my butterfly doesn't quite fit? So instead of scrunching it, I'm just going to let it go right off the edge. That's actually a really neat thing to do sometimes in your artwork because then it makes it feel like the picture continues even past the edges of your paper. Draw some little patterns on the wings, some purple patterns. This is quite a purple world that's happening here. I'm getting a lot of stuff going on. Do we need anything else? Maybe our little purple fish needs a friend. We'll put some little tiny fish over here swimming up, swimming in to, to say hi. They almost look like little goldfish crackers. <laughs> here we'll have one just peeking in right off the edge of the paper. <laughs> and let's see maybe we are listening to some purple music put some musical notes in here I like music what do you think a purple song would sound like I don't know I think it would be really fun okay now I'm just going to go back over the outline around my face just to kind of help the face to pop out now that there's a bunch of other stuff happening in the picture. If you, if you go back and make kind of a, a stronger outline around some of the things that you want to really make stand out, um, that can really help it to just not get lost in, the, in the, all of the details. So I'm just going to make a little bit of a heavier one oh i almost forgot my beard here's a little trick too you can turn if you're using a crayon if you have the paper off you can turn it on its side and that's a really good way to get some quick texture and it also just kind of fills it in faster than using the point I think my purple world is just about finished. And <laughs> look, I'm purple now too. <laughs> I, my, at least my hands are. Probably more too before I, if I keep working on this. Actually, I might put just a little bit of color out here in outer space. You see, I don't want to stop. I just want to keep going. I'm having too much fun hanging out with you guys. <laughs> a little purple sky in the background behind some of this. If you're only using one color, one trick, if you're using crayons or um, colored pencils, is you can make it feel like there's different shades by not pressing as hard. See how I kind of fill in the background but not not as dark as some of the other stuff? And so that kind of adds a little variety. Okay, there we go. I think that does it. There's my purple world. <laughs> I can't wait to see all of your colorful artwork too. I want to see. I want to see them. So be sure to post them and tag Mr. Paul or and Palenque Arts 
share your artwork with us, let us know what your favorite color is and what it reminds you of, because that's just going to inspire everybody too. When you see somebody else's artwork, a lot of times you can get ideas for things that you want to try. So it's really fun to share your art and to look at other people's art too so that you can get inspired. All right, now what's the last thing that you do when you finish a masterpiece, do you remember? You have to sign it. Now that doesn't mean that you don't have to be done yet. You can keep working. But since I'm finished, I'm going to go ahead and sign mine. All right, Mr. Paul. Ta-da! There it is, my monotone drawing. One color, purple for me. But whatever color you picked, I can't wait to see it. I hope that you guys had so much fun hanging out today and making art together. I love getting to see all of you. I look forward to this so much every week. Thank you for tuning in, for being so creative. You guys are all awesome purple people. <laughs> and all the other colors of the rainbow too. Have a wonderful week, okay? And make lots of art. Do lots of creative stuff. And I can't wait to see you back here again next week for another Art Day with Mr. Paul. Until then, bye-bye, everybody!